excuse me. Anyways, um, I had all my overheads and everything together. And then about 45 minutes ago, he said um, he wanted me to talk about the importance of hearing him. And he shared a couple of scriptures with me, so I jotted them down on a piece of paper real quick. So haven't looked them up. i got to look them up. But uh, I know that it's going to pertain to exactly what he's talking about. The, uh, the idea of hearing or not hearing God is, um, is not really something that should be optional. I mean, it's, uh, it's vital to life. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, obviously, just to have life, we have to hear Him. Yeah. And um, to not hear Him means we're not experiencing life. Not that we don't have it, but we're not experiencing it. So, uh, we'll see where He goes with this whole thing tonight. I don't know. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. I'm here. We are here, Father, and thank you that you're here. Thank you, Lord, that you always lead and guide us. You direct us in the path that you've chosen for us. Lord, there is a way that seems right to us, but the end of it is death and destruction. We don't want to go down that path. We want to go down the path that you have chosen, even if it's full of thorns and briars and and all kinds of dark little monsters along the way. Father, we choose to obey you. We choose to walk in the path that you have chosen for us because you rule and reign in the visible and in the invisible, Father. And you see the invisible things that are ahead in our lives. And, and you help us make choices and decisions, Father, that steer us away from those things that can do damage and harm to us. We may not see them, but we sure do believe in you. We trust in you. Help us, Father, to hear your voice and to embrace what you have to say and to bring fully active in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> the, uh, the important thing, I, I think we can all agree God speaks. Mm -hmm. He has that incredible ability. As a matter of fact, when you, if you go back to Genesis 1, in the beginning, God said. So we know God's a very uh, spoken person. He likes to, he really speaks out. And um, when we begin looking at the importance of what God has to say, uh, it has to rank just premier in our lives. It has to be number one. There, there's no other, no other place to go. I mean, if if God isn't speaking to us every day, then what are we being led by? What, what are, where are we going? I mean, what's, what's in our path? But he is speaking. And if there's something that is being challenged in our life, God has obligated himself to speak to us about it. And I think we need to gain that confidence too because the importance of hearing God is the difference between life and death. It's probably this battery, Mr. B. Or maybe my phone by the... Oh, on that battery. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> See, I just heard that little voice in my head say, your phone's there, dummy. <laughs> Bobby, you did that exercise, right? Yes. Yeah. Easy fix. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The... Uh, the Creator knows how He designed us. He knows what we function on. You know, if you try to run an automobile on water, unless that gas, that engine has been tr transferred and set up to be able to vibrate and change water into hydrogen and oxygen and separate the hydrogen and oxygen, the hydrogen burn in the engine so you can run, your engine's not going anywhere. It doesn't work. It, it, you can push it, you can drag it, you can do anything you want to, but if it's designed to run off gasoline, the best fix is to put gasoline in it. We're designed to run off the Word of God. Here, here. And it's important, not that we just understand the Scriptures, because the, the Scriptures reveal conversations God has had with thousands of people over the years, 
and, and communications he had to tens of thousands, millions and millions of people, including the billions that's alive today, we are able to gain knowledge from what the scriptures have given us as a book of remembrance of the communications of God. But it can never be mistaken as being God's communication. Because God himself has obligated us, uh, obligated himself to us to, to communicate and speak with us every day. And for us to be able to conquer and overpower the schemes, the weapons, and the devices that the enemy has set against us, we have to have the master. We have to have him. And I think that when we find ourselves battling with that knowledge of whether I've heard God or not heard God, or does God really speak today? How does God speak today? How's God speaking to me? All of those. I think that if we don't arrive at the knowledge of the truth, we substitute a communication that we accept to be God. Mm -hmm. That there is, there is an impartation that comes into our life on a daily basis, whether it's God, the flesh, the enemy, or whatever. If we are not established in our communication relationship with God, then we are vulnerable to substitute other things in its place. But we can accept it at the same level that we would the communication that God has. So <clears throat> it's important that we not only know that God speaks, but that we hear God. And it's vitally important because when people are not hearing God, a lot goes on. When, when we look back at, at Israel, if you go back into Joshua, and then get into Judges and some of the others, you find out when they came out of Egypt, God brought them and set up a house in Shiloh. And the Shiloh house didn't endure. The place where God put his name, it didn't make it. And the reason it didn't make it is because they rebelled against God and God spoke to them and sent prophets to them and everything else and they would not listen. And he called to them and they would not hear. So he destroyed the house at Shiloh. Are you with me? How important was it mm. for them to hear that that was God speaking to them? Amen? Hallelujah. In Jeremiah, in chapter 7, which is one of the scriptures that he gave me, let me, let me see where he's at here. We know in Jeremiah, of course, the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord is the same word that became flesh. It wasn't the Bible. The Bible didn't show up and say, hey, Jeremiah, you know, read this. The word of the Lord recorded all throughout Scripture was the word of the Lord. The same word that was in the beginning with God. The same word that was with God and was God. Amen? So when we understand that the word of the Lord, God himself came to Jeremiah and spoke to Jeremiah and gave him some insight of the importance of hearing God, not just for Jeremiah, but for the whole nation of Israel, which ended up, of course, being uh, having an impact on all of mankind. So I want to share with you a little bit here out of Jeremiah. And he told him to stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah that enter at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust you not in lying words. Now, that's important. Because any word that doesn't come from God is a lying word. And what he was saying was is that you, you were listening to other voices, other things communicating to you, and not what I'm communicating to you. And he's telling them, quit trusting in those lying words. They're not going to strengthen you. They're not going to support you. They're not going to put you where you need to be. They're not going to bring the peace or the joy or the contentment or anything else in your life that you're wanting for. They're not going to bring you to your desired habitation. <clears throat> Trust you not in, the, in lying words saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Who is the temple of the Lord? We are. So we, looking back with Revelation,
Revelation understand when God's talking about the temple of the Lord, it could very well be a very strong message to us. Amen? You think God's a respecter of temples of the Lord? Mm -hmm. I think as he dealt with one temple of the Lord, he'll deal with another, and he'll deal with another. We know what he did at Shiloh. <coughs> Excuse me. We know what he did at Shiloh. We know what happened to Jerusalem in 70 AD. So, and we see what actually mankind did to the true house of the Lord, which was Jesus Christ. And now we are the temple of the Lord. So we, we need to bring in this full perspective so that we understand that the communications of God go way beyond some place, some point in time, and a particular people. But it, under, it unveils a principle of God and his communications. How important was it for, for the children of Israel under Joshua, who came out under Moses, to hear the voice of the Lord? They did not turn, they did not repent, and God destroyed the whole house at Shiloh. He destroyed it all and wiped them all out. Historically, that's true. Under Nebuchadnezzar, they're in Jerusalem. Every, they're doing their thing. Everything's going on. What happens? They were built against God. They wouldn't give the land its Sabbath rest. Manasseh was sacrificing children, and the streets of Jerusalem were filled with blood. God said, I've, I've had enough. So what did he do? He wiped out all of Jerusalem, carried everybody captive back to Babylon, and, and the land laid uh, 70 years. It just laid there. Just grew up. But animals came through it. People came through. Rape, pillage. They did all the things to the remnant, the ones that were left there. And after 70 years, God spoke to Jeremiah, revealed it to Daniel, said 70 years are fulfilled. We're going back. Amen. But he didn't just say you're going back. He said, and this is a communication to God, he said there's going to be 483 years and then Messiah is going to show up. When Messiah shows up, everything is going to be set back. I'm going to confirm all the promises that I made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of them that come before you. I'm going to confirm all the promises, all the blessings. Uh, everything that I said I would do, I'm going to confirm it through Messiah. So that's important to hear. The, the importance of hearing that would give them understanding. But here we hear what was going on in Jerusalem, and it didn't happen, so they go in captivity in Babylon. Now all of a sudden, they're going back to Jerusalem, and Jesus shows up. And when Jesus shows up, he was the greatest manifestation of the vocalization of God that had ever been. He had the heart and the mind and the speaking ability and the acting ability of the Father. How incredible that we can read, when we read about it, we have to understand, yeah, Jesus did this, but he said, I don't say anything except for I say what I hear the Father say. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything except what I see him do. So all of these things are a communication of the heart and the mind and the purpose and the plan of God. So here he comes to God's chosen people set apart way back from Abraham, the promised seed, the Messiah, not just the Messiah, but the seed line that would bring Messiah, it's all there. Jerusalem, the house of God is there, the city of God. Everything is in place and everything else. And you would think, wow, here comes Messiah. God's really going to turn loose that blessing now. And he did. He did turn loose that blessing through Messiah. But here's the problem. The people couldn't hear it. They, they couldn't hear it. Jesus said, why can't you hear me? He said, it's because... You are of your father, the devil. Now here they were, priestly garbs. Everything's there. They're going to the, to the synagogues. They're going to the temple. They're doing all of these things. But he said, you, you, you're dressed up. You've got all the garb. But you can't hear me. You can't see me. You don't understand the times. You don't know what's going on here. As a matter of fact, he said, all day long. I stretched out my arms to you. And, and, and I would have gathered you as a mother hen does her chicks, but you would not. He said, therefore, because of that, 
Because of your inability to hear me and recognize me and see me and do what I'm saying doing, you wanted to do what was right in your own eyes, do what was acceptable to all these different things, he said, your house is left to you desolate. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we see in 70 AD what happened. Whoa, it was finished. Jesus even told them, this generation won't pass until all things are fulfilled. Amen? So the importance of hearing God, life and death. Victory or defeat. Light or darkness. Fulfilling and establishing the promises and the blessings of God or desolation. Mm -hmm. uh, says one, one of the kids left their phone and Miss Rose found it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have all these things that are going on, but it brings us to that point. How well do I know the Father's voice? Yes, yes. Am I hearing Him or do I think I'm hearing Him? Am I confident? How can I have confidence in something that I'm not established in? The importance for me to hear God has to be more important than anything else in my life. That if I can't hear Him, it doesn't matter what I have, what I do, where I am, who's with me or anything else. It all has to do with the first thing I have to do is seek first the kingdom of God and a right relationship with Him. What is that right relationship? It's a relationship based upon love, communication, and everything else. We have to hear Him and we have to know He hears us. There's, there's nothing more important. How can we obey a voice we can't hear? How can my life be obedient to the Holy Ghost of God and be in a place to where I'm fulfilling what God's objectives are for me and be where God wants me to be and all these other things if I'm not hearing Him? It's like spinning the wheel and throwing a dart. It's like spinning the pages and mm, there it is. It's, it's a type of witchcraft. Mm. It's solely carnal and solely flesh. And remember Jesus uh, in, in the parable of the sower. He said, anyone who hears the word of God and understands it not or doesn't comprehend it, doesn't hear it, the enemy snatches away the word that was sown. Amen? Now, when, when he was given to him in, in the parabolic form, he said, the fowls of the air come and devour the seed. So the enemy snatching it away is that the enemy comes down and begins to devour, chew at and try to rip away and tear what it is that God sent to us. And, and why is the enemy coming after it? Because he knows what happens that when if that word is allowed to do something, it'll come to fruitfulness. Yeah. And he can't have that. Because he has to have darkness and despair and death. And this here would bring light and life and revelation and everything else. Amen? So when you hear what God's speaking... And, and, you're, and you're unsure of it, you're vulnerable. And God wants us to understand the importance, how important it is to not only hear His voice, but to know it's His voice. And then what value did we put on what we heard God say? Is it optional? Is, is He king? And is His word the law for us, for our situation, for our circumstance? Or is it well, it could be compromised. Now, I think we compromise it. I think we do it more than we ever would imagine we do it. But there is an important role that we have to understand that it's not just a matter of not hearing when God sends his word to us, however he sends it, whether it's prophets or circumstance or creation or any other different thing that could happen, or if he personally calls to us and we don't answer. All of those things are vitally important. And, and I know where he's going in Jeremiah. Um, the other scripture verse he gave me was in Amos. But when he tells him to stand in the house of the Lord, and he said people are saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And, and God is saying, who is the temple of the Lord? Hallelujah. Because, see, all of those things were 
examples that happen to them to teach us something. But if we don't learn, then we're probably going to repeat the same stupid things they did. <coughs> Crystal, would you give me a glass of water or something, please? Anything. And, and he tells them in verse 5, 6, and 7, if, if you will amend your ways, in other words, quit ignoring me. If you'll quit being busy, 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 and start hearing me and stay till you hear my voice, oh, that, that'd be awesome, anything. Then, then he said, I'll heal you. And I'll allow you to dwell and be and come and enjoy yourself in the temple. Bless your heart. Whoa, whoa, whoa. thank you. <laughs> we shoot them across the room. Amen. Amen. And then verse 8 again, he tells them again. Behold, you trust in lying words. And I think it's key that we understand, that even though I mentioned it earlier, we have to hear it to where it becomes sustainable in our thought life. And that is, unless it comes from the Lord, it's not truth. Amen? Right. So, how many times a day do we trust in lying words? Wow. Words that know not the truth. I don't think lying has to necessarily be to deceive you and to lead you. I think it's just words that are other than God's words. So he says, Behold, you trusting lying words, will you still murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense unto Baal, or other words, give all your uh, attention and all your praise and stuff to the works of man, and walk after other gods whom you know not, and then come and stand before me in the house? which is called by my name, has it become a den of robbers in your eyes? What he's saying is, do you think that's acceptable to me? Do you, you think I've made you now, revelation, knowledge is, I've made you to be the temple for me. Are you going to trust and believe in other things and then think that's acceptable to me? Do you think it's okay? Do you, I mean, do you think that I've turned my house into a, a, a den of robbers and thieves who believe lies and do whatever it is they want to do? He says, of course not. I don't think anybody would, would say that, but Jeremiah is trying to bring their attention, which in turn, the Holy Ghost can bring our attention. Because I don't know about you, I, I don't want to just survive in life. I want to live life. Amen. I want to be victorious. I want to manifest my Father through my life. Amen? There, there is no other thing that is more important on planet Earth than for us to glorify our Father. That's it. At, at the expense of whatever. You look at what he did with the, the prophets and stuff, they, they were always uncomfortable. They were always doing things they didn't want to do, but they did it because that's what the Father said to do. Amen? Hallelujah. He said, but go now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people. So he's pointing them again to the house of the Lord, which we know we are. And now because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking. So what he's saying is, I communicated to you. Every day. I communicate. Look what he said. Yet you heard me not. Now, why would God hold them accountable for not hearing him unless they had the ability to hear him and didn't? Amen? I mean, would God be righteous in holding them accountable for hearing him if he knew they couldn't hear him? Or do you think it was that he knew that they could hear him? Mm. But they chose not to. They, they chose all the other things that was going on, except for the one thing that should have been the most vital thing. What has God saved to me today? What has God communicated to me? 
not because he's a mean God or anything else. He loves me. He cares for me, and he's watching out for me, and he's going to give me insight and direction. It may not be what my flesh chooses, but if that's the thing God chooses, that's what I want. Yeah. Amen? So he says, Therefore will I do unto you. Well, he said, I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, yet you did not hear me, and I called you, but you wouldn't answer me. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You remember Samuel when he was in the uh, temple with Eli, and he was actually Eli's servant. Mm -hmm. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Lord, you called to me? He goes, not what me, but lay down. He laid back down here. Samuel. He gets up and he goes again and again. And then finally, Eli goes, hmm, this might be the big guy. <laughs> he said, uh, next time you hear that, just say, here I am, Lord. So you see, he's calling. He's calling. I believe daily the Lord speaks to us and daily he calls to us. Mm. Daily. Now, the reason I believe that is because he said, don't take any thought for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, that, if that's the case, then the importance of hearing God is to win the day. Amen? How many would like to just win a day? <laughs> and at the end of the day, you go, yeah! Praise God, we kicked some butt today. What an awesome and great day. That should be our daily experience. Come on. So what, are we what are we settling for that that's not our goal every day? It's not how many blows can I take of the enemy today or, or, or what's these things going on? I need, to, I need to be that place where in the morning, thank you, Lord, this is the day that you've made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And at the end of the day, thank you, Lord, this was an awesome day. Yeah. I rejoiced and was glad. Yes, here. Yeah. Instead of, oh, Lord, <laughs> thank you for getting me through another day. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what's wrong. Mm -hmm. We're not hearing him. You can hear him. Say it and say, I can hear him. Mm -hmm. And he wants me to hear him. Mm -hmm. He's not only speaking to me mm -hmm. through so many things, mm -hmm. but he's calling me mm -hmm. individually. And I know it's His Spirit in me. The Holy Ghost of God is the place of His voice. So nobody else has to bring it to me. The voice of God abides within me. I can hear Him. And by the grace of God, I will hear Him. I do want to hear Him. Not to say what I want Him to say, but to say whatever He wants to say. Amen? Hallelujah. It's, it's important. I mean, the, the, the significance of it. I'm going to read you a couple of things of showing the importance of it. How important was it for Shiloh to hear God? How important was it for Jerusalem when Nebuchadnezzar came through to have heard God? Because the prophets came in and told them all the blessings and everything else. He go, okay, go, and then they go, oh, yeah, but let's not forget the other side. If you turn from the Lord and do all these other things and go about serving all this other stuff, God's going to wipe it all out. Because he's not going to let it endure at your demise. He'll take it out to save you. Amen? Chris will find me a napkin or something. He would have cut him out to save he, he will take it out so that you can live. And that's what he did at Shiloh. That's what he did under Nebuchadnezzar. And, and that's exactly what happened again under Antiochus Epiphanes. And that's what happened again under Titus Vespasian. All of those things were relevant. Was the temple good? Sure, it was good. It was the ones in the temple. It was the ones handling the temple. It was the ones that were in there doing the thing. Going through the motion, they had accepted all these substandard things, and they weren't hearing God. They were doing what seemed right in their own eyes. And the reward was not good. Not good at all. Amen? That, that's fine. <laughs> Amen. I was uh, sitting in an air conditioner early and it gets my sinus going. Excuse me. 
I won't charge extra for that. That's a freebie. Amen. So, when we start understanding the importance of hearing God, look at the number of things we do every day, and we actually do them and value them without thinking about it over the importance of hearing God. And I believe that it's something that the Holy Ghost knows in order for us to get from where we are to where He wants us to be, hearing God has to be premier. Yes. It has to be. And, and I, I believe that along the line somewhere, we have to repent from all the things we accepted to be God when it wasn't God. 